For Titanfall's unique gameplay with both pilot and Titan combat to be successful, the game devs at Respawn Entertainment really focused on stellar level design. That's apparent in the way they made the various maps highly competitive, no matter if you're in a Titan, fighting a Titan, hiding from a Titan, or even when you're fighting another person. So in this shot, it's a great example of the thought that went into Titanfall's level design. So here we're running down the street as a pilot. Now that's the regular human soldiers whenever you're not piloting a Titan. All of a sudden, two Titans pop up and are fighting. Thankfully, the devs built in a lot of little areas that you can hide as a pilot to get away from the Titans, like this little alleyway that we ducked into here. Here's another great example of this, but from a different perspective. So here we're in a Titan. Notice how the buildings have really high ceilings, so both Titans and pilots can enter this building. But if you look to the right as we enter this area here, notice that there are stairs. There's no way a Titan could really fit up those stairs. Like the alleyway in the previous shot, that can be a great way of escaping if you happen to be a pilot caught in this building when a Titan enters. Of course, if you stand in an open doorway, take a Titan's missile to the face, chances are you won't be able to survive, even with great level design. Something else you'll have to think of for great level design is how the characters can move. For example, in this shot, there's not only the level of this building on the ground, but you can jump on top of the building and get a whole new vantage point. This adds even more complexity to the level that can make or break the game. In Titanfall, the devs at Respawn nailed the level design. Because Titanfall is such a fast-paced game, it's really easy to miss a lot of the areas that were lacking. Check out what happens when we shoot this can sitting on the table. There's absolutely no interactivity with the environment at all. Or in this shot where we shoot the glass. Nothing. You'd almost never know it was glass if it weren't see-through. But hey, maybe in this world the Titans can be blown up, but the glass and the pop cans are indestructible. Okay, now as we turn around, look closely at the shadows on the table for the mug and bottle, and the lack of a shadow for the extremely dimly lit pack of cigarettes lying there. This is a great example of what we found to be the biggest technical issue with the game, the lighting. Now, we say it's the biggest technical issue because for the most part, it really looks to be almost non-existent in a lot of the areas. Everything looks like it used baked lighting. Of course, baking your lighting isn't always a bad thing. Uh, some of the outside areas like this shot looked pretty good, actually, even though most of the lighting still looked to be baked in. But those areas that did look good really just ended up providing a stark contrast to the other areas that could have used some better lighting. For example, notice the lights on the ceiling in this shot. They look like fluorescent light bulbs, which, as I'm sure you know, would emit closer to around 5,000 Kelvin or closer to a bluish hue of light than a warmer light bulb would. But if you look at the light on the wall above the scary mask painting, it looks like there should be a really warm light somewhere above the painting. But where's that light coming from? There's just nothing there to have that light be magically emitted into the scene. And once you notice it, it's kind of hard not to notice some of this lighting inconsistency throughout many of the areas on the map. Like the light, both in the corner by the car on the left and again by the electrical box on the right. Maybe it's just because there's usually only one primary direct light outside anyway, but if there was a consistent factor in the lighting, it seemed like most of the obvious issues were with the lighting indoors, while a lot of the outdoor lighting looked okay. Now, hopefully most of the time you won't notice a lot of the lighting issues because you're going to be focusing more on the gameplay itself. And in that regard, Titanfall, again, did a great job. For example, the devs did two very important things that you can learn from for helping a player get familiar with the controls for a game. The first is, of course, to have well thought out and intuitive controls. Now, if you've ever played a AAA FPS before, the controls for Titanfall will feel very comfortable when you're doing something like jumping up on a bad guy's Titan to start shooting at it at point blank range. Even though you've never played this game before, the controls will feel very comfortable because they're similar to other FPS games out there. The other thing the devs did in Titanfall is to have a really well done tutorial when the game first starts. Even if you've played an FPS before, there's still going to be some things that you're probably not going to be accustomed to in an FPS, like running along the wall in this shot. But the tutorial does a great job of walking you through all of those things before you're thrown into a multiplayer environment. In fact, some of the artists here at DT who helped out with this review primarily play on the PS4. 
but no one had any issues hitting the ground running with Titanfall on the Xbox One. Another nice touch that the game devs did in Titanfall is to create multiple animations for getting into a Titan depending on the type of Titan you're using. From something like this animation where the Titan actually picks you up and puts you inside to an animation where you climb up on your own. And if you notice, the gorilla stance the Titan has when sitting on the ground waiting for you is really nice touch as well. And the nice animations don't end there. In this shot after we get in, pay special attention to the bottom panels of the HUD as the Titan cockpit closes in around us. Notice how they take a little longer to display the outside. It's an incredibly cool little bit of polish done to the animation to help sell that you're actually sitting inside of a Titan and what you're seeing in front of you isn't really a window, but it's actually a heads-up display of the world outside. Now, the last technical issue I'd like to point out is with the environment modeling and texturing. The set dressing is pretty minimal, and what is there, for the most part, has extremely low resolution. It's pretty obvious that some of the props and assets laying around were the victims of needing to cut back on the poly budget to hit higher frame rates. For example, notice the simple cubes on the right here, or this fire extinguisher that's inside a cube without any sort of attempt to make it look like there's even glass there. Now, as we come down the stairs here, notice the unrealistic trash texture on the trash can laying on the ground on the right. Or these extremely pixelated textures on this vending machine that are so pixelated that, for the most part, they're completely unidentifiable. Or even this massively huge QR code on the box. Can you imagine trying to scan that? You'd have to stand quite a ways from the box to scan that. Then again, you're not really going to be spending much time scanning QR codes in Titanfall. So in the end, while there really were quite a few technical issues that we would have liked to see improved upon, from a developer standpoint, most of these issues are completely understandable because in a game like Titanfall that relies so heavily on multiplayer, you really need to cut back where you can to keep the frame rate as high as possible. And the best way to do that is to find as many of those little areas that you can to cut back on the system intensive processes like dynamic lighting or even the poly count of set dressing props so the game can play faster. Since this is a technical review, we couldn't really overlook some of the technical issues in our final scores, but we understand the decisions that were made from the devs in order to help build smoother gameplay. It is a great example of how sometimes you need to sacrifice on the technical side to help push the gameplay. And from a non-technical perspective, Titanfall is definitely a fast-paced game that's extremely smooth and extremely fun to play. Now, if you haven't already, feel free to add us on either Xbox Live or PlayStation Network using the gamertag DigitalTutors, and we'll see you online.